You know, in a minute, I'm going to give you a bunch of jewels and gems and tips and tricks and life hacks and resources and, and things to allow you to manifest the greatest version of you. And it's all to lead you to this point where you make a decision. Today's about making a decision. And it's a brother guy from Manifest University who breaks decision down in such an impeccable way. Uh, so big shout out to Al Tutson. But he said the root word in decision is decide. Root word in decide is side. The definition of side is to kill off. Pesticide. Suicide. Homicide. You can think of so many words with side in it and all of them represent the killing off of something. When you make a decision, you are killing off all other options. You are moving as if all other options do not exist because they don't because you've decided otherwise today is the day that you decide decide what you will be who you will be how you will be what you will have and what you will do as far as I'm concerned no matter where you're at no matter where you've been Greater shall you be, greater shall you do, greater shall you have. Welcome to the Greater Existence Podcast. I'm six-time author, homeschool father, and divinity coach, Brian Hippolyte. I founded Manifest University and Manifest Academy so that you and your children will always have a place to learn and elevate to greater versions of yourself. Welcome to episode 20 of the, the, the Greater Resistance Podcast. We don't make a lot of excuses. We don't take a lot of them either. It's normally about getting things done. It's normally about making that change. The big difference that we see between people who are living successfully, and I would define that as anyone who is accomplishing their goals. I'm living successfully already. I got a whole lot more than I'm going to do, a whole lot that I plan to do. But my number one goal was to be able to stay home and parent my children and teach my children. I'm a home, I'm a homeschool father. I'm current. I'm living my dream. I'm successful in, in, in what I was aiming to do. There's still, again, much more for me to do. This was a primary thing for me. So. Anything that, anytime that success happens, it is normally the seed of detailed planning and goal execution. Executing all the way through, following through. When we talk about 2023, what comes to mind? What is it that you want to create? That you did not create in 2022. What is it that you wanted to begin that you did not begin in 2022? What is it that you said you were going to do? That you did not get to. For one reason or another. The story is not important. What is important right here is the deciding what it is that you're going to do. We can't course correct without looking at what the plan was, where we were going, and where we ended up. Personal development has a lot to do with with reflection, right? If you're unable to reflect, you're often unable to make the necessary changes. So, I see a... A big difference, a major impact on the lives of those who incorporate a, a, a healthy amount of reflection in their life. And 
And the people who are taking time to think about what they're thinking about, the people who are uh, meditating, the people who are e- evaluating, the people who are giving serious thought to their behaviors, their attitudes, their motivations, and their desires. That's that's reflection. And and self-reflection is absolutely important if you want to be uh, effective and efficient in your development. And again, that means taking time to evaluate what you're thinking about and your behaviors, your desires, your motives. It's the process of uncovering the why behind your thoughts, your emotions, and your actions. Practicing self-reflection takes time and intention. It requires you to take a a step back, right? And this is why it's such a powerful thing because most people aren't doing this in their life. That's why you keep making the same... I I didn't mean to say you. That's why they keep making the same mistakes. That's why cycles get repeated. There's, There's no reflection. At least not an honest reflection. So these will lead, reflection leads you to questions like, who am I? What worries me? What am I scared of? What am I holding on to? What do I need to let go? If what makes me feel like, if not now, then when? What matters most to me? You know, as a mentor, I often come across people who mistake me as a counselor. <laughs> and, and when the, and, and the conversation that they're, that they're explaining and wanting me to give them um, advice on how to deal with stuff, it's really an easy fix. After you get through your story and after you go through all that, it's an easy fix. Because I can normally ask you a simple question And you'd give me a simple answer And that simple question is Well what matters most to you? Because we should make a decision Based off of what matters most Right? Does that make sense? What matters most to you? These are questions of self-reflection Self-reflection can take many forms It can include um, happening in the moment, you know, like for many of us, self reflection in the moment has kept us alive, has kept us out of situations that definitely could have turned a whole lot worse. Self reflecting in the moment allows you to quickly understand your thoughts and your behaviors and act on them in real time. And that's power in a world full of people who don't do this, you know what I'm saying? So, for example, uh, self-reflection is, y'all, when we're in a difficult conversation with our with a friend of ours, and you can feel that there's tension building, and that that self-reflection is is, is that moment that helps you keep your patience, that helps you acknowledge uh, and understand your emotions or what the other person is is, uh, is experiencing, you know, at the time, and allows you to navigate through that. So we can see why it's why it's important, why it's imperative, why it's powerful. When dealing with other people, and we're kind of just I'm going I'm going around in different parts of, of of reflection because I know it's something that um, outside of goal reflection and goal oriented uh, orientated reflection we don't do it. It's not we don't see it enough in our in our in our, in our culture and, our, and around it. So I just want to give you a full picture of what it looks like. In different forms And dealing with people Reflection may may look like or sound like Self-reflection may look like or sound like Why am I responding this way? Why do I feel like this? What bit is my fear in this moment? What am I hiding? Is there anything I would change about my behavior If I could respond differently? How can I overcome these challenges in the future? The, 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 the Greater Resistance Podcast. What we want to get to is reflecting on us initiating goals, setting goals, planning goals, and not following through with those. But first, I want to give you five 
tools that will help you with self-reflection if it's not one of your strong points and it's not something that you are uh, accustomed to doing. You know, there's many benefits to engaging in self-reflection, including reducing stress, uh, improving your learning ability, having better understanding of yourself and of your environment, feeling more empowered, feeling more prepared, feeling more connected in relationships, and just an overall stronger well-being. So if that's something that you can say that you want for your life, I want to give you five tools that are going to allow you to integrate self-reflection into your life. So the first one is ask yourself prompt reflection questions. Ask yourself questions that will prompt you to reflect. Think of some questions you can ask yourself to prompt that amount of reflection. I gave you a few of them. Sometimes having these pre-planned questions in your mind create the routine of self-reflection. I literally had to create the habit in my mind to say, what is it that I am either fearing in this moment that made me act like that? Because a lot of things that we do, nearly all things that we do, if it's not rooted in, uh, in abundance, of something is rooted in a lack of something and lack is one of the biggest things biggest fears that people fear so what is it that I'm fearing in this moment that made me move that way was I fearing losing control of this situation was I fearing not being understood what what was it that I was fearing in this moment that made me move that way or want to or feel the need to react that way like I I had to keep prompting myself to ask that one of the best things I ever did was ask myself why I did the things I did second best thing I ever did was look in the mirror and say I forgive you I recommend I recommend you doing both of those Let me give you these tips, five tips to integrate self-reflection into your life. You can ask yourself questions to prompt reflection, right? You can even, you can, you could even go online. You can Google it if you really wanted to, fam, and you will find um, prompts for self-reflection, questions that you can ask yourself to lead you to to self-reflection. You just got to be intentional about it. You know what I'm saying? Another another great thing to do for self-reflection is journaling. Journaling, having an honest dialogue with yourself, a pen and a paper is an excellent way to get your thought and your emotions out and give you the opportunity to observe them when you're not inside. So that's also a useful tool for uh, for you to have. Um, And if you're having trouble getting started writing, speak that comment, speaking in the conversation for write it out, write what you, write, write that dialogue out, you know, the right questions give you the right answers, lead you to the right answers, and the right answers lead you to the right clarity, and with the right clarity, you can move in the right direction, and that's really what all, we all want to do, right, so the next thing, the next, uh, the next tip for self-reflection is having the ability to differentiate between self-reflection and creating fear, you know, self-reflection is supposed to be beneficial, so it's supposed to be constructive. However, at, at times, reflection can also turn into worry and, and negativity. You know, so you got to know when you're doing one and, and, and not the other. Reflective thoughts are curious, but neutral or factual. You know, not tied to a particular emotion or direction. So, make note of that. When you find yourself creating fear instead of reflecting, take a break. Try to get another time. You can also, you know, use some of these other things that I'm telling you about. Seek support. That's uh, that's 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 tool number four. Seek support. Sometimes self-reflecting can be difficult when it's when it's when it's done alone. Sometimes you need to have a great a, a great way to pull it out. Uh, is to have a, a, a honest conversation with somebody. So, if you need help working through difficult emotions or situations, there's no shame in seeking help. There's no shame in speaking to a young, a, a loved one, 
um, and someone that you that you that you uh, can trust, and to even just just to listen, it's no it's no shame in just saying, hey, I just need to get this out of my head. You mind, you know, just being being in this conversation with me and let them know what level of engagement that you would like from them, um, you know, and after you after you share your information. Um, it's, it's nothing. It's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with uh, getting a mentor and getting someone that you can share your thoughts with and seek direction from. You know what I'm saying? They're, these are people that can help you enhance uh, your self-reflection skills. And then also getting in, in that, and that also means getting in an environment that encourages self-reflection. If that's not something that people around you do, then definitely. Be intentional to put yourself in an, in an environment where that's normalized. It's where you where you have found yourself today. It's definitely such an environment. Um, we we normalize everything that leads to growth, you know. Um, and we stay away from all the things that that would pull away from you being able to grow into that greater version of you. So definitely seek support by intentionally putting yourself in an environment for growth. You know, people often say you can't grow in um, in the same, or you can't heal in the same environment that you got sick in, and and that's true. As that 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 that, ha- that has some 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 truth to it. Um, but what is true about it does stretch across um physical, mental, and emotional um planes and realms of existence. So, if you are in an environment that is you know, I mean, let's just let's just make it simple. If everyone around you smokes and has no problem, no sees no you know no reason to not be smoking, and you feel like I don't want to smoke anymore because I've been doing it for for 20 years, or because I want to get this job, or because I you know or you know whatever your reason is, but your environment doesn't promote that, it doesn't aid you in in going about that goal, does it? Right. So you want to surround yourself in an environment that is supporting your goal. And the fifth thing is you need to carve out time for reflection. Make self-reflection a priority um, by intentionally scheduling time. You can't tell me anything is, is important to you. You can't tell me where you scheduled it into your schedule to make it happen. I've, you know, like, I'm sorry. I do a lot. I run a, I run a lot. I'm responsible for a lot. Um, not just of things that, that have to do with me. Things that have to do with a lot of other people. And... And there's absolutely no way that I could manage all the things that I manage and do the, all the things that I do if I held the schedule the same way that I see other people out there holding the schedule. Like, the people who are telling me, I don't know how you do it. These are people who don't hold the schedule because that's how I do it. I have a schedule of what needs to be done. And and I move off of the intention to get that schedule you know, executed. I carve out time to um, empower myself and empower my schedule starting with carving out time to make it so being intentional means setting yourself up for an optimized success the, 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 the greater resistance part. and that's what you're here for right you're here because you want to achieve a greater level of success we don't just want to do a, get there a little bit we want to do enough more than enough to get the desired result there are many people who are failing in their goals and their relationships and who they want to be in life and the way they do everything from big goals to small goals. There's people who fail at internet marketing because they only they do just enough to make them feel like they're doing something, but you're hardly doing enough to create the desired impact. And then they say, "Oh, this doesn't work." <laughs> oh, you're just not. You're not. You're not doing the suitable amount to create the desired result and it's time to reflect on how you've done that when this came to your goals welcome to the frequency that's all about turning you into a greater version of you you are now tuned in to the greater resistance podcast with me the manifest mentor parents let me get your attention real quick every tuesday and thursday night is going up at parenting with purpose this is a part of manifest university but you do not have to be a part of manifest university to be a part of parenting with purpose again every tuesday and thursday night we are having high level high vibration conversations on ways that you can be more effective 
in your parenting. Create the environments for your child's development as well as for your development. Parenting with purpose is just not about for your child. It's about you growing as well. Oftentimes, there are people who are parenting from their inner child parenting from their childhood trauma. And we have to deal with those things. We need to identify those things. And we also need to identify what it is that we want for our children and begin to move in alignment with what the desired result is. And it's all good because it's all just a reprogramming that often needs to happen. And parenting with purpose is a place where that reprogramming happens. And we have amazing results, amazing testimonies. So if that is something that you want to get into again, go to doumu.com and sign up for Parenting with Purpose and be in our classes every Tuesday and Thursday night. What would you say has changed about your household since your wife joined Manifest University? It's a lot more good energy, a lot more light, different conversations, less arguments, more communication, more openness. I love that. Thank you. It's not just a university. We are a tribe and a family. Join Manifest University today to be in my daily calls, my weekly classes, and a part of our 24-7 community. You can go to brianhippolite.com or doumu.com to join Manifest University today. You are now tuned in to the Greater Resistance Podcast. We're moving into goal reflection, but it's just the same thing with self-reflection. It's linked to personal growth, and it's linked to goal execution, goal development, goal growth. Your goal's growing up. You know what happens when your goal grows up? It's happening. It's, that it's, 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 in, it's in front of you. It's there. It's time to create another goal. When your goal grows up and it's time to begin adding greater goals to that, it's a great day. I heard Dame Dad say, man, the best funeral to go to is a funeral of a, of a dream. Because it, that means it came true. The dream is dead. It's now real. It's time to dream something new. So I don't know if you're in a space where you need to begin to dream something new or you need to reflect a course correct. But whatever that greater is that you want, you can have it. It's available to you. It's available to you. And all we have to do is apply these tools. The, the, the Greater Resistance Podcast. That will allow you to reflect and gain a better understanding of your strengths, areas of improvement, your motivations that connect you to your goals. It opens up the possibility of positive change and allows you to learn from your past experiences. If you are unable to do that, if you're unable to do that, you don't, you're, you're not, you're not separated from a lot of other life on this planet. A lot of other life that animal life on this planet. That we as humans, you know, say we're so much smarter than. Not if you're not, if you are not able to um, look at the past and make a make a better choice. There's 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 plenty of animals able to do that. And again, if we're not able to do that, what level of intelligence and attention are we really using? Are we operating? At? So goal reflection. Did we meet our goals? What worked? What did it? What do we need to change to be more effective? How can it be done better? This is goal reflection. So think about when 2022 came around. What is it that what your goal was? Did you get to it? Did you do it? Around what time of the year, if you didn't do it, around what time of the year did it fall off? I might be wrong and I'm not claiming to be right, but I'm just saying, but most, there's a, there's, stu there's studies, there's all types of stuff that would show and suggest that around March, April, by or by March, April time frame, by the second quarter of the year, 80% of the people who 
have or higher than eighty percent of people who have, who have started a goal have stopped that, stopped that goal, stopped that pursuit of it. Gen memberships are at an all time high January, right? Those gyms look completely different in March, in April. Why is that? Why is it that is that 90 day period that seems to be such a big difference between those people who uh, who started and then those people who finish it? What is it? The, 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 the Greater Resistance Podcast. They say, even just sticking with this particular instruction, I mean, this, this particular example, even with gym memberships, they say the people who, who come in there with a trainer or come in there with a partner are, 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 are whatever percentage more likely to be there at the end of the year. The people who have invested the people who got an accountability partner with them, the people who sought help, they get through it, they push through it. And why is that? Because most people bail as soon as the adversity comes. And I don't want to get ahead of myself because because we've been talking about reflection, goal reflection. Now, let's talk about course correction. Course correction is one of the most important skills we can develop. It's crucial to recognize when a mistake is made and learn to use our ability to change. Change, real change. Like a shift in force, a shift in direction, not a apology kind of change, you know. An apology without change, in fact, is clever manipulation. So if you've apologized to yourself for not getting that goal, not getting to it the way that you should, not making it happen the way that you could have, for allowing such and such and this and that to take you off of your square and take you out of your position, you can't change your, you can't, you cannot go into this new season with the same type of behavior you gotta change that behavior you have to course correct it's then when you course correct that you have the ability to move forward a better person life is a test and sometimes sometimes we pick the wrong answer knowing that we can go back and we can ref- and we can reflect and we can say well where did this become the wrong answer? How did this become the wrong answer? How did I not know the right answer? The, 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 the Greater Resistance Podcast. I'm going to give you some signs that you may need to do some course correction in your life. If you ever said something, if you said something like it's lonely at the top. If you've been obsessed with, you know, I was obsessed with, to, with, with making it to the top of, of, of uh, just whatever. Like, I just, I was just always had this, um, Ambition to just always be at the top of whatever I was I was in, and when I arrived, however, I I learned that it wasn't all that it was cracked up to be, and um and I've seen all throughout life, and we've all seen all throughout history, people realizing that their continual pursuit for advancement seriously compromised their ability. To spend quality time with their family, to have the level of life and love that they wanted in their life, to build meaningful relationships with friends and colleagues. Like, we've seen it. I learned it. And if you haven't learned it and you don't learn it from the wisdom that's being given to you, you'll learn it when you get there. But that's a sign. That's a good sign. If you can say something like that, it's a good sign that maybe there's some course correction that should take place because it does not need to be that way another another sign that you may need to have some course correction is enough is enough (laughs) i've had enough of this not having any more of this and whatever it is whatever that is that makes you say that hey my friend that's a good indication 
might need to do some course correction so that you can get away from whatever that enough is enough is. On the other side, you if you find yourself saying enough is never enough, you also may need some course correction. You know, if you're one of those people who the way that you go through life is is to um, compare your toys with your neighbor's toys or what your friend got and what you got or what you can show people that you got. And, you know, if you, if, if you live like that, then you're probably always in pursuit of this materialistic high, this egocentric high. And, and the ego will never be full. So if you are living through motivated through egoic pursuits you'll 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 never be fooled and that will destroy you as it has everyone else that's ever ate from that table the game of life can become obsessive i oftentimes have to sit back and say are we being obsessive with success are we making this move right now because we're obsessed with winning You know, are we doing this for the impressions or are we doing this for the impact? These are the type of questions you're going to have to ask yourself if you want to get to a higher level of life. You're going to have to ask some high frequency questions. You hear what I'm talking about? If you feel like it's all work and no play, you need a course correction. You need a harmony in your life. Many people use the word balance. We don't around here. That's another juggling act. That's a balance is an act all of its own. It's an action all of its own. It's something that must be done all in itself. I'm not trying to add another thing to the plate. There's a word called harmony. That means that all things are flowing together peacefully. (laughs) And that's what we desire. You don't need a work-life balance. You need a harmony in your life where all things flow together properly, peacefully, and in alignment. If you're one of these people who can say you've pleased everyone except yourself, there's a course correction that needs to take place. If you're one of these people who make everyone else's plate and don't make your own plate first, there's a course correction that needs to take place in your life. If you're one of these people who keep moving based off of making everybody else happy, but you're really not happy, there's a course correction that needs to take place in your life. There's people in here who've never made a move without seeking the approval of someone else. A friend, a family member, a, 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 a significant other. You've made other people happy by being miserable. You've made other people content while you were discontent. Now is the moment to appreciate yourself. And you know what appreciation means, right? Of course you know what appreciation means. It, well, in case you don't, if you never had an asset or... Or something like that before You know what depreciation means Right When you take a car off a lot The moment you take that car off a lot It loses its value It depreciates the value When you have an asset or something That increases in value It goes up in value Appreciation means value is increased Now is a great time to look around and see the things that you have in your life that are decreasing your value and the things that you have in your life that are increasing your value. And you begin to move in accordance to everything that has value to you. I'm appreciative for several people on this line that add value to manifest university. They don't just come here and get fed and and, and go back to the you know the rest of their life and be great. They found a way to be great here and said, "This is what I can. This is what I can add. This is what I can do. How can I increase the value of this great thing that has increased the value of my life?" And that is the type of energy that will move you far 
beyond your wildest dreams. That is the type of energy that gets you favor in rooms you couldn't pay to be in. I'm talking to you about course correction, and I know for some people that means a small alignment that's going to lead to a big adjustment. You know, I don't know if you what you know about sailing or what you may know about flying, but in, in but in both cases, or driving, or running, or, or just transportation, if you want to go from one space to another, oftentimes the shortest distance is a is a straight line. Right. Um, and if you were to talk to a pilot, or if you were to talk to the captain of a ship, they would tell you that the slightest directional change, if uncorrected, over time, would lead to a vastly different destination. The smallest alignment over time would lead to a vastly different destination. So some, so it's, it's true that small alignments lead to big adjustments. The greater so for some podcast. people, all they're going to need is a small alignment. But there's other people here who need a major adjustment. There's other people here who need a dynamic shift in course correction to take place. They need to go a completely different way than the way that they went before. Because the way that we went before wasn't working. Why was it not working? Why is goal abandonment such a common thing in our culture? Goal abandonment is so common and so frequent because, you know, I'm sure there's a more impeccable way to to put this, but people set a lot of bitch ass goals. Bitch ass reasons I'll find a more impeccable way To say it And to put it to you But at the moment that's it Bitch ass goals for bitch ass reasons And in, in some in, You know and, and, and some people enjoy doing some in, Pardon my, my language just early in the morning You know but We've all seen somebody Be on some bitch ass shit right Bitch assness is cool until it runs straight into some real stuff, right? Same thing with your bitch ass goals that you made for those bitch ass reasons. Soon as some real shit come your way, that bitch ass goal get to missing. It can't stand the pressure of the realness. So why is ban the goal of goal abandonment so real? Because the goals themselves ain't fucking real. The goal, a goal, Zig Ziglar said, a goal that is casually set is abandoned at its first obstacle. Goal abandonment, studies have shown, is one of the leading cause of bad breath. I don't know if y'all knew that. Casually, just letting go of goals, it's not, it's, it's not, it's not good. It's not good. And that's why I could tell. When people are back, mm, you abandon your goals a lot. So I stay in the house and got to deal with this. Leading cause of goal abandonment is casual goal setting, y'all. Stated another way, it's the wishing and wanting, but not committing and creating. It's wishing and wanting. But not committing and creating. I want I just want that I just want that to sink in. I want that to maybe be the thing that you share with somebody when you when you leave here and they ask you what you what you learned. There's that you learned that the difference between a real goal and 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 and, and, and a bitch ass goal is one is wishing and wanting and one is committing and creating. Let me tell you what it looks like. It looks like I want a different job. It looks like I'm wishing I made more money. I'm wanting a promotion. I'm wanting my own business. But I'm not committing to what it takes to 
be more effective and be more efficient. I'm not committing to creating the opportunities that will lead to that fulfillment in the workplace or in, in, in towards the things that will lead, lead me to financial freedom. I'm wishing and I'm wanting. So I'm making a goal because I'm wishing and I'm wanting. No, the goal comes when you to something you're going to be committed to creating. You hear what I'm saying? It looks like it looks like wishing for a better body. It looks like wanting to feel good about what you see when you look in the mirror. And I'm not here to tell you that any particular body type is supposed to give you that feeling. If you feel like you want to feel and see something different when you look in the mirror, but you're not willing to get physically active enough to make the change. You're not gonna get a trainer. You're not gonna get. You're not gonna invest in the tools that would help you. You know, the right tool will make every job easier. The right teacher makes every task easier. You're not willing to get these tools or the t- or the or the teaching to do it. The resources that that you can have, and of course, this works with anything, not just your body. Go. It's like those people though that that want to look better, but don't want to change their eating habits. You are what you eat, right? And there's a lot of people who want who, who want better for themselves, but they eat poor, they look poor, they think poor, they feel poor, they react poorly to life, just a poor ass existence. In the name of being comfortable and not pushing your limits, that's... We gonna let all that bitch assness go, ain't we? It looks like you wishing for a healthy relationship and wanting someone to love you the way that you want to be loved, but not committed to grow yourself as you grow with someone else. Not committed to their growth, which means allowing them space to grow. And not be what you want them to be as you want them to be. I want this healthy relationship. I just keep doing toxic shit. The, 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 the Greater Resistance Podcast. <laughs> Saying, I don't have no clue why this shit is going wrong. Wishing and wanting but not committing and creating. It's, it's like... Those... <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like, you know, just not creating a safe place for someone to grow. It's not creating the opportunity for things to be greater. It's like saying, I want them to love me the way that I need to be loved, but you don't love yourself the way that you need to be loved. Can't have anything you aren't willing to give to yourself, and you can't expect anything out of others that you aren't giving to yourself. And you will never create anything outside of the vibration that you hold. So if you aren't loving yourself right, don't think anyone else owes you that either. If you're willing to lie to yourself, don't believe I owe you the truth. I don't know your shit. aren't real goals that's what all this is saying those those aren't real goals those are people who are wanting things and wishing for things but not willing to be committed and create them real goals prompt you into action real goals inspire you to invest your time your money your energy your resources all in the name of getting better every day welcome to the frequency that's all about turning you into a greater version of you you are now tuned in to the greater resistance podcast with me the manifest mentor get 30 days free at manifest academy which is our all new community interactive online learning from pre-k through fifth grade there is over 100 hours of video for learning for childhood development for everything that makes them a great being there's tons of content for my children and um and some other amazing young 
men and women, young kings and queens that are sharing their light, their love, and their information with the rest of our community. So go to MA Learn and Play to join Manifest Academy today. Thirty, The first 30 days are free. We even have some live sessions so that the children can get together in a, a safe uh, environment and do some interactive learning and gameplay activities together. So again, sign up your child at MA Learn and Play dot com for manifest academy you are now tuned in to the greater resistance podcast write this down goals that are backed by investment action will result in achievement and investment actions that don't just hear investment and think i done put money and stuff and ain't come through investment action you have to have continuous action leading you to that achievement. Goals that are backed by investment action will result in achievement. This happens by law. Not by luck, not by accident. There are laws to success. There are laws to success and, and you should be aware not only all these laws that to, to success, but the laws to successful living. You know, you are mind, body, soul, and energy. Right? Those are the four dimensions of your existence. Mind, body, soul, and energy. Shout out to Noble Guard. Get your crown. Get your crown. Shout out to all the nobles in the building and all the and all the fam that's a part of uh, the elevated culture. Big shout out to elevated culture. Uh, big shout out to the mighty MU and everyone that's in here growing with us on a daily basis. You know, um, it's a great time for you to join the family. There's so much expansion uh, taking place. We got a lot of first time authors coming out of here. We got some best selling authors coming out of here. We got some international best selling authors coming out of here. Uh, we got some people that are breaking generational curses and creating generational wealth in real time. You know, if you want to be around uh, a group of people who are definitely definitely changing the needle uh moving moving the needle and changing the, and changing realities for not only them but everything that they, they encompass then you know come and be around the family um and, and, and grow with us i love the way we grow together i love the way that we glow together and when we meet up in, per, in person listen it's it's something it's something to behold it's some it's something to behold we do retreats for the next retreat is November the 10th through the 13th is in Orlando, Florida. We're going to be championing a lot of our a lot of our writers um, that will be uh, publishing a book by that time between now and November. We got a handful of people in the in the men and MU that will be publishing uh, a book, and we got some people in MU that will be publishing two books by then because we are collectively working on one so by the time we all get together in november many of us will be two-time authors some of the people who had never published a book before between right now and november when we all get together will be will become a two-time author because of the power of working together as a team and executing goals you hear what i'm saying so if you want to be in an environment that's going to empower you to do greater than you've ever even thought that you can do hey pull up to the mighty mu this is what we do the, 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 the greater resistance podcast and you can go to do you mu.com to sign up our classes start at just a dollar a day there's multiple levels i started by talking about knowing these different laws and i mentioned the parts of your existence to point out that you are energy you know that your mind body and soul but how often do you acknowledge the fact that you are energy and that's actually a pretty big part of your existence did you know that if you we were to see you know our eyes don't see energy fields but there's energy fields all around us taking place right if you were to see it your aura your energy your presence depending on your level and your vibration could actually expand around you 12 feet in circumference around you your energy your energy is bigger than your body your energy is greater than your mind you know what I'm saying? It's a pretty big part of your existence. How often do you pay attention to it? 
how often do you familiarize yourself with the laws of energy that govern everything that has to do with energy and frequency? The universal laws and different things like that, that if you work in accordance with is going to add value to you. And if you're moving out of accordance with them, you could expect, you can certainly expect to have some level of um, a pushback coming, coming your way. If you apply intention and commitment to your goals, you will get the job done. You'll get that promotion. You will increase your income. You'll start your business. You'll, 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 you'll fix that relationship. You'll do those things that you need to do, but it's going to require to imply intention and commitment. It's a big shout out to everyone who came in here knowing that they want to make a change and that they're going to make a change, not because they're wishing and wanting, but because they're committed to create the desire. Whether it's a goal, whether it's a status of a relationship, like you have to be committed to creating that which you desire when it comes to your parenting, when it comes to the way that you raise your children and the relationships you want to have with your children. It's about being committed to creating the environment that you desire. It, this, these, this doesn't change. It works across all fields. So it's not complicated, but it also isn't always easy, is it? I'm going to give you 10 reasons why people abandon their goals commonly. We started with the first one. They're not specific. They're not specific. One of the main reasons that people fail to reach their goals is because their goals are not specific enough. When I ask you what you want to do, you know, people, they go, oh, oh man, see, you know, because I what I, you know, what I'm going to do is, uh, you don't got your plan. You 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 you, you know how many people would say some shit like I'm gonna be a millionaire. And how how we how how you gonna do it? Is the goal to become a millionaire or is the goal to make a million dollars? If the goal is to make a million dollars, how are we making a million dollars? How much do you need to be making a month to make a million dollars? Do you know that? No. You don't? Well, damn. We that's that's where you know what I mean. That's the level of intention you're bringing to this goal. No, uh, you break it down. I know six figures starts at two hundred and seventy-four dollars a day. And my fifth year of serial entrepreneurship, I'm aware of the number that I need to make down to the hour to reach my goal. The, 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 the Greater Resistance Podcast. And I'll be honest with you. When you break a goal down like that, it gets a lot easier to, to, to execute. Someone was saying they needed to generate around $2,000. And it had all these reasons why it was difficult. When we broke that down to the day, when we broke that down to the hour, it was embarrassing to that person to even come up with an idea that you don't have the power to do that when you break this goal down like it seems so big when it was like I can't come up with that in a month and okay but shit when you broke it when you broke it down it was only like eight dollars an hour or something like that you know Break your goals down. Get to get specific on how you're executing them. Have very specific goals and of what it's gonna take. You break your goal down into five steps. You break each one of those steps down into four or five things that need to be done to complete that step. And you knock them shits off the list. If your goals are not specific, your results won't be. The, 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 the Greater Resistance Podcast. If you have vague goals, you're gonna produce vague results. Because your goals affect your strategy. You understand that? Write that down. Your goals affect your strategy. Just as much as your strategy is going to affect your goal execution. What I mean is the strategy to achieve a $10,000 a month goal and the strategy to achieve a $1 million a month goal is totally different. Right? Therefore, your goals are not specific. If your, if your goals are not specific, 
you cannot create a specific, a specific action plan for them. The first thing you must do is make your goals as specific as possible. You want to get this done? Okay, the next question is when? What are we doing? When is it going to be done? You must give your goals a date and an address to pull up. This is where you're going to pull up and this is when you're going to get there, go. Everybody in the huddle, mind, soul, body, goal, intentions, ancestors, great spirits, whoever, break. I'll meet y'all at the finish line. I'm going to go do what I got to do. And everybody else is going to do what they got to do. Everything else is going to do what they got to do. And anything I meet along the way, I know is an opportunity for me to achieve my goals. It's not the opposition or the obstacle that it appears to be with my human eyes. But it's an opportunity for me to get closer to my goal. Another thing is people have doubts. You know, fears. Fears the biggest, the biggest killer of dreams. Biggest killer of living abundantly. Fear and faith actually don't coexist. You've never seen them in the same place at the same time, at the same party, none of that. Fear and faith don't coexist. And the reason why they don't is because they're the same exact thing. It's just your use of this chemical reaction in your body that determines whether you are going to connect it to a belief in something positive that has not happened or a belief in something negative that has not happened. So faith and fear, faith with, with, with which would empower you cannot be present if fear is what you choose to disempower yourself with. People often have doubts on their goals and they do not believe in their abilities. They set a goal and then they imagine all the things that go wrong and they ask themselves all the what ifs. What if I fail? What if this doesn't happen? What if they don't like me? What if this and what if... My daughter did that the other day. And I love I love the way that she soaks up this game. Because sometimes I don't have to give a deep explanation. I just she was and what if this? I said, but what if you don't? She just she just soaked that in like, oh, oh yeah. Yo, what if I don't? Why if, if, if it could be a what if I don't, why would I even side? Why would I even give attention to this what if? Doubts and fears kill more people than anything else. You know, when you have doubts, you do not believe in yourself. Doubts will lead to indecision. And if you got my book, Manifesting You, it's in 155 countries, changing a whole lot of lives right now. If you got this book, you you, you already know, because one of the keys in this book tell you that doubt and a decision, crystal when when they get together, they 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 crystallize together and they form fear. Indecision is the seedling of doubt. Indecision is the seedling of doubt And this is why committing and deciding Is so important Because there's so much shit that you won't even go through If you are committed and have decided That you're going to do something Then indecision doesn't have the opportunity To form into doubt And they don't have the opportunity To create fear If you look at all the greats whether they were great for being great or whether they were infamous, they believed. <laughs> they believed in a product. They believed in a service. They believed in and 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 their cause. They believed. We've changed a lot of lives believing that we had the something powerful to share with them. I just see. Um, someone put in the chat that we send send these books to the prisons, and and it uh, I and, and every time one of my books is going to a correctional facility, one that's that's leaving my presence, I definitely mark up the front page of it and send a whole lot of love to that to that brother or that sister that that's in there. And if I have the opportunity to, I send them an extra book and tell them, you know, when the, when your spirit leads you, put this in the hands of the right person. 
you know what I mean? Um, and that gives me goosebumps every time I think about being, about these words and this light um, that comes from this book, being in such a place of darkness and, and isolation, because that's a great place for growth. That's a great place. It's a horrible place to be, but listen, it's a, it's, it's, it's a great place for growth, people. Things grow in darkness. So to give these seeds um, to, to, to energies in there, man, it's, it's a powerful thing. I don't, I'll say I'm still not used to the feeling that, that comes from it and the letters that, that I get that come from it and different, you know, and just the appreciation that comes from it. Like, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's extremely humbling to be a lighthouse. But we believe that we have a light to shine. And I'm going to let it shine. On all of us, and I'm and, and I began to attract people who not only wanted, loved my light, but found their own, and began to shine their own first in their own life, and then allowed that light to grow within them, and then they began to illuminate in such a way, in such a way that others near and far had to know of its existence. I've seen people come in here dull, dimmed, and find their light within. And now you can't help but see. And that's what this place is about. You definitely gonna have an opportunity to, to, to join our join our community and I and I invite you to do so. But we're gonna keep working through these uh these reasons because I know some of these some of these is, is hitting home with some of the reasons why you haven't got some of this shit done and we need to get past this, alright? So they're not here's, here's another reason. People not working on it. They're not working on it. It's very common reason why people feel that like they goals is they really don't be working on it. They say that they doing it, but they don't really be doing it. They doing just enough to say that they doing it. You know, there's a lot of there's there's plenty of people and and I don't want to use another gym example, so I'm going to use a social media example. Because everybody wants to uh, sell things on social media and influence on social media. And there's all these tools for you to do it, right? But there's still a bunch of work that you have to do. And most people do the amount of work that they feel is more than the amount of work that they didn't put in before. So they say, oh, I put in some work. And then they don't get the desired results and they say, oh, this shit ain't working. People aren't supporting me. <laughs> the internet's hating on me. You're not doing enough of what will bring you the desired result. You want a better relationship with your significant other, somebody that you care about? It's not going to happen because one or two times you show empathy or compassion or you are the vibration that you want to see in the situation it's gonna happen because you continuously do it's gonna happen because you intentionally continuously time after time after time bring to the table what you want at the table and influence those around you that this is the normal way to be are you working on it or is just something that you're doing just when things go wrong a lot of people, a lot of people, a lot of people want to put forth the effort when it's time to fix some shit that wouldn't need fixing if you just took care of the preventive maintenance, if you move from a mindset of preventative maintenance, if you move from a mindset of keeping it in its best condition, then the, the, the fall, the slip, the fix wouldn't be necessary. But you're not willing to do enough to keep it in its best condition. And that only means that you don't see the value in it. So whether we're talking about your goal, your relationship, your body, whatever. If you don't see the value in it, you're not going to do what's necessary to keep it in a necessary condition. You got something in your room that's valuable, that's a fairly family heirloom, or that whatever. I bet you, when, you know, let's say it's fragile. I bet you when you go to move it. I bet you when you go to move it, you're going to wrap it up. You're going to do something. You're going to show some level of intention to keep it in the condition that you want it to be in because of its value. 
You move through life too much. We move through life too much. Not putting forth the appropriate amount of attention to things of value. And then we wonder why we don't keep these things of value. We wonder why we didn't keep these goals. We don't value the result. Welcome to the frequency that's all about turning you into a greater version of you. You are now tuned in to the great. Welcome to the frequency that's all about turning you into a greater version of you. You are now tuned in to the Greater Resistance Podcast with me, the Manifest Mentor. Parents, let me get your attention real quick. Every Tuesday and Thursday night is going up at Parenting with Purpose. This is a part of Manifest University, but you do not have to be a part of Manifest University to be a part of Parenting with Purpose. Again, every Tuesday and Thursday night, we are having high level high vibration conversations on ways that you can be more effective in your parenting. Create the environments for your child's development as well as for your development. Parenting with Purpose is just not about for your child. It's about you growing as well. Oftentimes, there are people who are parenting from their inner child parenting from their childhood trauma. And we have to deal with those things. We need to identify those things. And we also need to identify what it is that we want for our children and begin to move in alignment with what the desired result is. And it's all good because it's all just a reprogramming that often needs to happen. And parenting with purpose is a place where that reprogramming happens. And we have amazing results, amazing testimonies. So if that is something that you want to get into, again, go to doumu.com and sign up for Parenting with Purpose and be in our classes every Tuesday and Thursday night. What would you say has changed about your household since your wife joined Manifest University? It's a lot more good energy, a lot more light, different conversations, less arguments, more communication, more openness. I love that. Thank you. It's not just a university. We are a tribe and a family. Join Manifest University today to be in my daily calls, my weekly classes, and a part of our 24-7 community. You can go to brianhippolite.com or doumu.com to join Manifest University today. You are now tuned in to the Greater Resistance Podcast. Tony Robbins said people are not lazy. They just have impotent goals. They got lazy goals. They don't have goals that inspire them. They're not specific enough. Are your goals exciting? Are they motivating you? Do your goals make you feel like I might need another lifetime to get it done, but I'm going to do it? I'm going, what, get rich or die trying? Like, you, I don't know where you came from or what you experienced, but I'm familiar with um, an environment of, of uncertainty that would provoke you to be certain about some things. What I'm going, what I will have and what I won't. My must have, my non-negotiables, and what I'm going to do to achieve the things that I desire, I'm going to do it or I'm going to die trying. And you know what? Matter of fact, I'm going to plan that this goal is going to outlive me. And so along the way, I'm going to be multiplying myself in people that will finish my goal when I leave him. That goal is bigger than you. I'm going to die empty doing all that I had given all that is within me, but my goals will be unfinished because my goals are greater than my life. If your goals aren't motivating you to that, if you if you can't look at your goals from an immortal point and say, how is this going to live out past my existence? Your goals aren't big enough. The, the, the Greater Resistance Podcast. At Manifest University, we have been talking about our goals. 11-11, when we'll all be together in Orlando, Florida for the MU retreat number five. 11-11, November the 11th, is a time where each year at MU, we are all accomplishing a major goal. So we've been talking about this for months now. What is your 11-11 goal? 
We can ask plenty of other people on the line right now, and they'll be able to type in the chat what they're doing, what they are accomplishing, what they are manifesting in their life and their reality by November the 11th. Not only do we give them the tools to do so, you know, as a community, we there we got accountability sessions that go on, we got execution sessions that go on, we got a system of getting it done, of making it happen. Because these goals are bigger than us. If your goals are not bigger than you, then make a bigger goal. Alright? Make your reasons strong. Be motivated to do the things that, that you need to do because it should have a greater purpose than you. I've left out the whole divinity aspect of it. And a lot of what I'm talking about. Because I've been talking about more of the mechanics of it. But let's not mistake... A great purpose is tied to much greater than you. So what is it that you are set to do that will impact much more than you? What are your, there you go TT, what are your 100 year goals? We talking about legacy. We talking about legacy. So that's going, that's, a, that's going to extend far beyond you. What are your legacy goals? They should motivate you. To do greater today so that you can bring that into fruition. It should motivate you to be the version, to become the version of yourself that can bring those goals into reality. I disconnected a few weeks ago for my time of reflection. I wouldn't come here to talk to you about reflecting if it wasn't something that I just was so intentional to do within myself before having this conversation with you. So about two weeks ago, my family and my staff allowed me the the ability to take uh, take about a a little bit over a week off and go off into the mountains where I love to be and disconnect from the world as much as possible. Um, And in that time, it was a time of reflection. It was a time of course correction. I lost my mother last July. And um, and I know from a from a CEO standpoint, I've been in autopilot for the last, you know, for the for the year, whole year, just in autopilot, just moving through business the way to to make business do what business need to do. Because I was really dealing with le- learning to live a new life, a new identity. One that wasn't wrapped up in being a son and a, and, and a caretaker and a, and a provider for my mother and, and all these things that meant me learning how to live a new life. And so I knew within this time that I that emotionally and mentally I was not in the a hundred percent when it came to business. Cause I'm doing all this internal work and and getting through this this uh, the the grief and the in in the process and you know learning how to smile again. So I was aware that in order for me to move into this next season, I had to do some reflection and alignment and see what I was doing that I was just doing because I was in autopilot. And what I was doing that I needed to change because it really wasn't aligned with the goal anymore. Goals change, you know. So I'm telling you, I was like this for almost a year. A lot can happen in a year that would shift the goal. A lot would happen and may happen in a year that would shift the destination that you're seeking to get to and how you want to get there. So I had to sit back and align with myself and say, well, 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 do all these things align with where I want to go now? And how I want to get there. I had to take that time to reflect. And I was determined to come back here. A greater man than I left. A greater leader than I left. A greater father than I left. A greater lover than I left. It all comes with being reflecting, reflective. And then of course correcting. Looking at what I can do better. And moving accordingly. So. People fail because they're not commitment. People are failed because they do not focus. You know, Andrew Carnegie, if you don't know who, who he is, is a an industrial pioneer. 
responsible for like railroads and different things like that. This is a this is a man that when the United States was 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 being built had things on lock when it came to creating things that the population needed. The U.S. Treasury kept auditing him. Um, really interesting story. A really interesting man, Andrew Carnegie. Um, his family, his power extends the same way that you would say the Chases or the Rothschilds or you know those those those, those type of people. But many years ago, the U.S. Treasury was auditing him over and over to try to find out how he kept making so much damn money. And they couldn't find nothing wrong. They couldn't find they couldn't find anything wrong. And so after some point, they visited him and said, "Listen, man, I, we don't looked at your books over and over again. We don't understand. So it looks all legit. How are you doing this? How are you making all this shit happen? How do you just keep manifesting stuff like this? How do you keep executing and making so much stuff happen?" And he said, "Plainly, I focus." Focus. Reaching your goals and achieving your goals is all about focusing on doing the right thing over and over and over and over again. Andrew Carnegie told them people, let's play a game. And I invite you to play this game. We're not going to play it right now, but I just want to tell you about it and give it a try. He said, let's sit down. And I want everyone to close their eyes. And I want everyone to raise their hand. He said, I want you to think of one thought, any thought, that one thought that you want to think about. Pick the one thought that you want to think about and think about it. And I want you to put your hand down when you stop thinking about it. And as the story is told, you know, within a few minutes, all those men from the U.S. Treasury, which if you don't know, the U.S. Treasury is a big part of the part of the corporation that runs the country. All of them had their hand down. Andrew Carnegie said, you men have no business running the country. You can't even focus on a thought for more than a few minutes. Where your focus goes is where your energy flows, and that's what's going to grow. So most don't achieve their goals because they don't focus on them. They allow themselves to be distracted. They allow themselves to be distracted. Now, distractions, I always say this, distractions don't appear to be distractions until they're done distracting you. This is true. But there's also a level, a higher level of intention that we need to be applying at this point in time to be on task. You know when you're not on task. You should have what your task is written out. That's that schedule. That's that day written out the way that you need it to go. I write out what I need to be thinking about. When I know there's certain things that I need to think about, certain conclusions I need to come to within my mind so I can create things. I schedule a time for me to think about that shit. Like, there's a high level of intention that I put forth that makes things happen the way that y'all see it happen and say, how you do that? I put a high level of intention towards it. Another reason why people fail is that they don't know how to handle failure. Too often we see people Jumping from one thing to another, from one company to another, from one business idea to another, from one relationship to another. Trying to find the answer versus being the answer. You don't know how to handle failure. You don't know how to handle something going wrong and you making it go right. Go right. Again. You don't need things to go your way for you to go your way. But if that's how you kicking in, that's how you going through life, then you're going to have some trials and some tribulations around every corner. And you should have some high level of anxiety because you're living compulsively. You're not living purposefully. So please, please. Begin to apply a much higher level of intention, especially when it comes to dealing with the way that you deal with failures. Your failures are there to teach you. Your failures are there to teach you and show you what you need to improve in. Right? Your failures are there to show you how you need to do it better.
So allow those to be something that you grow from, not that you yield to. People fail to reach their goals because they do not know how to handle when things go a way that they did not expect it. They choose to give up, they choose to change their goal. My partner told me last night, man, he, he really, he wanted to get it right with, with his lady. He was like, man, I don't, I don't want to have to start over. <laughs> what's the sense of, what's the sense of just keep starting over, dude, with a, with a, with a, with a, with a new woman? I want to get it right. I'd rather show more intention and bring more intention to the situation so we can see about getting it right. That means not quitting when it gets hard. That means not giving up when you're displeased. That means not letting go when it's when it's difficult, when that weight on your shoulder, when the pressure on your back. That means not abandoning ship when it's not going the way that you wanted to go. These are all lessons. These are all lessons that will show you the path, path to success. The path to success is paved by failures. Write that down. If you get it right the first time and you make it there the first time and you don't, hey, God bless you. Wherever else you going though, <laughs> take whatever lessons you learn to get there. Because at some point in time you may fail. Only to move you forward. Sometimes we fail because the dream was too small to begin with. Sometimes we we set a goal for a pond when we're equipped for an ocean. Sometimes you got to think bigger. Sometimes it's not the distraction or the fact that you gave up too soon, which is another reason why people fail, obviously, because they give up too soon. soon. If you run into a wall, don't turn around or, or give up. Figure out how to climb it and go through it and work around it. Michael Jordan said that. You know, there's a the deacon of <laughs> deacon, deacon Clark, the, the, the deacon, the heart coach of Manifest University. Um, she says I taught her how to scale walls, how to climb the walls, climb the mountains that was in her life that stopped her from seeing a, from a different place, a different place of perception, a different clarity that allowed her to move different in her life. She got this book manifesting you 111 keys to unlocking her divinity. And what it did is it took her out of the chains that was holding her still in this valley of her life. It, it showed her how to climb beyond the circumstances and the events of her life and see shit clearly. And listen, a year after getting this book, she released her first book and became a best-selling author. Then she released her second book and released, became an international best-selling author. Play with something safe. Don't play with him. You be coming here and, we, and, and, and things change. Shit happens. We align with that greater version with us. And the universe does too. If you haven't already got it, you're going to get it. You're going to hear from her this week. Finding Sierra is that first book by Deacon Clark. I call, I call it Deacon Clark. Her name is Sierra Clark. <laughs> uh, uh, international best-selling author, Sierra Clark. You got to say the whole thing like a tribe call question. You understand? This is what we do over here. This is what we do over here. We elevate. We level up. And we don't let people... We don't let people forget that you can't quit. We gon' we don't let you. We not gonna allow you to even entertain the aspect that you can't do it because we know the truth. The truth is greater shall you be, greater shall you do, and greater shall you have. So we've gone over. Reasons why people abandon goals. We've gone over what course correction looks like, what goal reflection looks like, what self reflection looks like. So take this time today. I always say a rising tide raises all boats. So if you was elevated from these conversations today, you go elevate somebody else and you let them know. Listen, this is what 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 made that that tide come up. This was that force, that energy from the moon. That made the ties moving in and come out. 
This is that greater shall you be, greater shall you do, greater shall you have, greater existence. Elevation vibe, and this is what we are. Every single day at Manifest University. Um, it's a great day to join. Um, it'll be a link coming up in just a moment for you to join. You can go to doumu.com and you can join. Um, if you're not already in the Manifesting Uni- Manifest University campus, that is absolutely free. That does get you access to, um, you know, just some elevation, some wisdom, some knowledge, and um, an awareness of things that are happening on our campus. Now, if you want to be in these classes, though, the classes start at just a dollar a day to be in our, our morning calls, our 7 a.m. morning calls. You get the recordings of that uh, as well. Um and a few other things that happen within our network. MU Honors is the place to be. MU Honors is where you get our, our morning calls as well as our evening classes. We have classes all throughout the week. We have classes Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And like every other every few weeks, we have a Friday class. You know, and so it's so many opportunities to, to expand. We have Parenting with Purpose on Tuesdays and Thursday nights. We have... Um, uh, on Orthodox Discovery on Monday nights, which is a, a place for creatives to grow. Whether you are growing your creativity or creating a safe place for you to grow and for you to expand. You know, you get all these classes. You get Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we have our MU Honors class where one of our powerful MU professors are bringing something that is going to elevate your life. Take it to a whole new, a whole new level. You got that. You know, Wednesday night, we in here. So Monday through Thursday, there's a class in the evening, as well as our Monday through Friday morning class, the recordings, and a lot of other dope stuff. You know, the uh, we have a book club where we read audio books, listen to audio books, discuss it, elevate. We got an elevation library, and this is a lot of the uh, videos that I listen to and different things that empower me. I share that with you as well so that you can just go to MU and go to the library and just get great stuff off of all subject matters that are going to lead to your empowerment, whether it's personal development, goal execution, self-mastery, successful living, all that great stuff. You know, just a, a greater existence is all there and is available for you in live content form and in video content form, and then as well as having this powerful community, you know, behind you is available. And then the third thing that you're going to get is manifest mentorship, and that's where you see a lot of these amazing results and, uh, and success stories coming out of you because you're going to get everything that I just mentioned, plus all of my books and a one-on-one coaching call with me every month. And we just, you know, we, 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 I'm personally invested in your success. And I'm going to give you every resource that I have to allow you to grow to that greatest version of you, whatever that means, whatever that looks like. Um, so, you know, those three options are available. Um, to you, so that's manifesting, you know, manifest university, MU honors, and MU mentorship. Uh, three different plans, three different prices, and listen, all amazing benefits. So it's a great day to invest into yourself and grow. The, 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 the Greater Resistance Podcast. Cause that's what it's all about, right? Take it into the next level, raising the bar, pushing it forward. Eliminating the distractions and equipping yourself with everything that's going to put you on the accelerated path. That's my goal. That's my mission as I move about this dimension. Showing people how to break generational curses and create generational wealth. It's been a pleasure to share this time with you. I pray you gain something from it and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Until then, be great, be powerful, be God, and get ready. For your greater existence. It's Brian Hippolyte, the Manifest Mentor. And I'll see you at Manifest University. Here is my latest affirmation. The theme song behind this podcast. The Greater Existence Affirmations. Which are affirmations that come straight out of the Greater Existence book. Get your copy today as well. At BrianHippolyte.com And these affirmations are streaming live on all platforms. I love all that is coming before me. I am an extension of source energy. I see endless opportunity. And I will enjoy aligning with the ones that are aligned with me. 
I am elated to be in a place of alignment and opportunity. I like the forward motion feeling I am feeling. I see universal energy responding to my thoughts. I enjoy the assurance and confirmation I receive that I am in alignment with divine energy and operating on frequencies of abundance. I feel empowered and highly capable. I love that I am my greatest source of solution and no longer my biggest source of problem. I am at peace and experience thoughts of pleasure and abundance. I am happy that I am attracting aligned relationships that increase all that is positive within me. I enjoy seeing all that is great within me influence greatness on other people in other environments. I love the power I possess to be greater than I've ever been. I welcome my glory. I welcome an outpouring of God's abundance. I feel the presence of God in all that I do. I love the feeling of clarity and understanding that is within I am grateful for all of my experiences and I can see how they have prepared me to excel at this very moment. I love that I have released lack, accepted abundance, and begun walking in my infinity. Abundance 
of the things I want present in my life. I am connected to my highest vibration. I am connected to the infinite possibilities of peace, power, prosperity, joy, and abundance. I am great. I feel great. I'm thinking great thoughts 
thoughts about myself and my life. I am showing up as the greatest version of me today. Today I will rise to the opportunity to be greater than I've ever been. Today is a great day and I will be great in it. This is my greater existence.